Rashawn Thomas is with us now. Well, we just watched you singing and playing with the children. Yes. What is, describe the feeling that, that you have at a time like that? Oh, it's amazing, Peter, because uh, when we first started with these children, it was difficult for them to do, to, difficult for us to get them to do anything fun. They just haven't had any fun that normal children in any other country would have because they've just suffered such enormous tragedies in their lives at such a young age. So to get them to sing or to play was uh, something that we really had to work at. So it's wonderful now to see them actually spontaneously start singing bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, they're not alone in this city no, or in no, this country. No. There are many, many like them. Right. It must be agonizing to make the decision of who you let in. Oh, I think that's one of the hardest things I've had to do, yes. How do you yes. do that? How do you make that decision? Well, we, it's very difficult at this very young age, but we've had to assess them. And what we look for in assessment is whether they are uh, comfortable with being in the classroom, comfortable with, uh, uh, with being with each other, uh, if they're um, uh, curious uh, in picking up a book or, or a toy. Um, and, and that's how the assessment is actually done. You know, there's so many needs in this country. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did you settle on education? Well, education is the foundation of any society and uh, with our experiences in working in uh, refugee camps in Pakistan, uh, our children actually very quickly realized that uh, education was, uh, was what was needed to get them out of this cycle of, uh, of uh, perpetual poverty. So, uh, A lot of widows here, obviously. Yes, yes. Um, give us a sense of, of their life. Well, one uh, widow that I've become very, very close to is 24 years old. She's um, got two young children. Her, uh, both her parents were killed by the Taliban about three years ago. And um, after that, her husband and her, his cousin were also killed by the Taliban. And she came here looking for a job. She herself is in a in desperate situation. She's illiterate, so the only job that she could get was a cleaning ladies' work and um, she was working from seven in the morning till four and she had no choice but to lock up her five-year-old and three-year-old three in one little room in a mud house uh, all day seven days a week so that um, sort of compelled me to do something about that and with my family's um, guidance we started a little widow support program where we have three widows and two other families living in a house uh, where uh, we're giving them training in uh, embroidery and we're hoping to find a market for that in Canada. Well, you know, you're obviously a Canadian who's made a real difference. Why should Canadians care about something like this? Well, I think it's inherent in us, in, in Canadians, and I think people here recognize that, you know, they... Uh, um, they have a great deal of respect for Canada and we have a history of uh, peacekeeping. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you. A pleasure meeting you too, Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you.